With the, two, with the 2019 federal election just around the corner, MCTV reached out to the candidates in the Sturgeon River Parkland riding to be able to sit down one-on-one -on -one and talk to them about their campaign and why and what their party stands for. Today, I'm, today in the studio, I'm pleased to be joined with conservative candidate Dane Lloyd. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me, Eric. All right, so the first question I have for you is, uh, in general, what just got you interested in politics in the first place? Well, you know, after church on Sundays, we'd all go to my aunt and uncle's house for Sunday lunch, and we'd get the whole family there. Oftentimes, it'd be like 30 or 40 people. And growing up, you know, my family, my family are farmers, and they're very opinionated. And so I'd hear all about, you know, all about their political uh, things that were going on. And so I, I quickly knew that, you know, we were a very political family and decided I wanted to help out in a political campaign for my local MP, uh, John Williams at the time, his name was. And so I handed out literature at the doors when I was about 13 years old. And I just wanted to get more and more involved with the political process. I really fell in love with democracy and elections and, and governing this country and the legislation. All right. Uh, as students, uh, we have vested interest in uh, how national decisions will uh, will affect our opportunities for us in the future. Mm -hmm. How will your party engage with and address the interest of young Canadians? Well, I think that there's a number of things that the Conservative Party are doing to address uh, you know, the needs of young Canadians. One thing that we pledge to do um, is when your parents open a registered education savings plan for you, they can open it uh, right after you're born. The government matches that with some money. I think they match about 20%. And we want to raise that to 30%. So that's about another $250 a year. So over 18 years, you can really see how that investment will build up. And it's a way to help families cover the cost of university or trade school um, if you should go to the, uh, choose to go to those things. Another thing is, like, we know that getting involved with dance, with sports, with arts, these things are very expensive. Now, four years ago, we had a tax credit that parents could get some of their tax money back uh, for the cost of putting their kids in sports and arts. So we're pledging to bring that back because the Liberals took that away. So that would help. And then ultimately, I think, you know, it's great that we have strong universities and colleges, but we want to make sure that there's jobs on the other end of uh, university so that those students that graduate can have meaningful careers. On, uh, on the topic of jobs, uh, Canadian unemployment right now is at its lowest rate in 43 years. And with that, Alberta's oil and gas sector is still struggling. How will your party address the needs of Alberta's economic woes? Well, you know, I think, you know, for a long time people have viewed uh, Albertan oil, sands oil, is uneconomical. Um, but we've seen since the 2014 oil price crash, our oil companies have done a really good job of cutting costs, becoming more efficient, even becoming more environmentally efficient by reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions per barrel of oil produced. And so we've seen those technological changes, and we need a government that is not only going to fight to uh, grow our energy industry, but we need to get pipelines built so we can get those energy resources to market so that they can get a fair price. And when we get a fair price, companies will start investing more money and they'll need to hire more people. And then we can also have uh, the investment to diversify our economy. We're seeing some great polypropylene plastics plants being hit, built here in Sturgeon County. And these are employing thousands of people. So we're actually finding new ways to use our oil and gas. And I think it's a wonderful thing. All right. Uh, another question is, can Canada transform its energy sector while, uh, while taking a meaningful action uh, to protect the environment? Absolutely. Like, you know, I've taken numerous tours of facilities here in this very riding of Sturgeon River Parkland, and I'm always amazed at the technological advancements that are happening right here in this community. We have the Northwest Redwater Refinery Partnership that's just in the town of Redwater in this riding, and they have carbon capture built throughout their entire refinery process so that each uh, barrel of diesel fuel that's produced and synthetic fuel that is produced is produced with the lowest carbon dioxide emission out of any refinery in the world. This carbon dioxide is then being piped into a pipeline and it's being pumped underground. So it's not impacting the atmosphere. Other things we have here, there was a company, and I won't name the company, but uh, uh, you know, across the world, the, uh, all the countries have agreed that we need to remove sulfur from marine fuel, so fuel that fuels these big tanker ships. They have a lot of sulfur. This sulfur is going to the atmosphere. It's causing environmental problems. So we've all agreed we need to remove the sulfur. There's a company here in this riding that has found a very unique way to remove sulfur from oil, and it's going to be a game changer for our industry. So it's these technologies that are gonna make us have a better environment, but also that will sustain our oil and gas industry. All right. Uh, one of the biggest issues uh, across the country is healthcare. Whether it's like the cost of buying drugs or just having to wait in the hospital, it's, it's uh, what, is your, what is your party plan to do about this? 
Absolutely. You know, one thing that I'm really worried about is, you know, I've talked to pharmacist organizations and we're actually undergoing serious drug shortages in this country right now. There are critical drugs um, that Canadians are having difficulty accessing and it's because uh, government regulation is trying to, to mess with the pricing scheme. And we need to have a balance between keeping prices for drugs affordable but ensuring that we can get the best possible drugs so that Canadians can access the best possible health care. So we need to address that pricing model on our drugs. Um, as for the opioid crisis, I agree, it's an absolute catastrophe. Thousands of people across this country have died and are dying uh, from fentanyl-laced opioids. And we need to understand that some people legitimately do need opioids and we need to ensure they have access to those opioids. But we need to ensure that we get tough on people who are putting fentanyl using these pill presses, people who are importing it from countries around the world. We need to get tough on this because it's killing people. There was a bill in Parliament recently, uh, it was put forward by a Liberal Member of Parliament, called the Good Samaritan Act. And basically, young people were worried that if they were doing drugs with their friends, because they were possessing drugs, they didn't call the police officers to help their friends who are overdosing. But now with the Good Samaritan Act, which I really agree with, you will actually uh, be immune or uh, you'll get amnesty. You will not be charged for possession of drugs if you call the police to save your friend who is overdosing. And I think that's a, a very positive step forward. All right. Uh, despite these uh, far-reaching national and provincial issues, uh, what do you think, what do you feel is the single biggest issue for residents of the Surgeon River Parkland uh, riding and how will your party address it? I think the, the biggest issue, you know, I've knocked on over 5,000 doors in this riding since this election started and what I'm hearing overwhelmingly is financial security for families and how do we deal with that financial security? Well, we need to ensure that we have good jobs. We need to ensure that we have a growing economy with business investment so that, you know, people's houses instead of, you know, the housing market has just been really struggling here. And that's people's biggest investment. And, you know, the second biggest thing is affordability. We're seeing the cost of gasoline go up, the cost of groceries go up. And the last thing people want to see is government putting new taxes on families. They want to see taxes being taken off families. So our plan is, is we want to axe the carbon tax. We want to focus on the big emitters and get them to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. We want to make things more affordable through tax credits and tax cuts. We're cutting the income tax over four years. We're introducing tax credits, like I mentioned before, the child fitness and arts tax credit. We have some seniors tax credits that we're bringing forward because we know that seniors on fixed income, every dollar counts. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, next question is, I actually have like seven rapid fire questions yes. for you. So you can ask the, uh, these to as truth as your ability. Okay. All right. When you were a child, uh, what did you want to do when you grew up? Um, I wanted to be a soldier or a politician. <laughs> All right. Uh, what was the first film you ever remember seeing in a movie theater? Ooh, in a movie theater? I mean, the first film I remember seeing was Braveheart. Um, and I was kind of like not supposed to be watching it, but I kind of hid in the background while my family <laughs> was watching it because it's pretty gory. I've definitely done that for a few movies myself. Uh, what's your favorite thing to do when you have downtime? Um, you know, I like to read books. Um, I have these really old computer games that I like to play and like they're so low resolution, low graphic, but sometimes it's just a good way to waste time. They're actually like computer games from the 1990s. So, yeah. All right. Uh, what musician is always on your playlist? Um, I'd have to say Johnny Cash um, or Eric Church. You know, I really like those guys. Um, so, yeah, I'd say those people right. are on my playlist. Uh, what is your go-to comfort food? Ooh, go-to comfort food, I would say is like Thai food. So like, like a good curry or like, yeah, curry mm -hmm. probably. Uh, what TV series are you binge watching at the moment? Uh, at this moment, uh, I just finished binge watching a show called The Expanse on Prime Video. And mm -hmm. it's a space uh, epic about uh, 200 years from now where humanity's colonized the asteroid belt in Mars and there's a war breaking up between Mars and Earth and then there's a mysterious alien thing. So I, I think it's a wonderful series and I just finished binge watching the first three seasons. All right, and uh, finally, for the rapid fire questions, if you could travel anywhere on the planet, where would you go? If I could travel anywhere on the planet, um, I would really like to go to, um, ooh, that's a tough question. I'd really like to go to, uh, you know, there's places I've been, like I really enjoyed mm -hmm. London, uh, I really enjoyed Paris, um, I've been to Japan before, um, but I'd say, oh, it's a tough question. I love skiing, I guess, so, um, Switzerland? It's actually my answer too. I'd love to go to Switzerland. Yes. Yeah. All right. And the final question I have for you is what separates you uh, from the other candidates and why should voters support you and your party on election day? Well, you know, 
I'm not going to like talk bad about other candidates, but I will talk about myself. I've been in the Canadian Armed Forces for nearly four years now. I'm a lieutenant in the reserves, and I'm the only, uh, currently the only serving officer who's also in Parliament. Um, and we have a military base in this riding. So I sort of understand the, you know, the needs and the concerns of people who serve in our armed forces. My family are farmers from around here. I grew up around here. And agriculture is a major part of our economy. It's a major part of our way of life. And I understand you know, the challenges they're going through, whether it's trading with other countries, whether it's environmental regulations, changing nature of work and food. Um, you know, these things are all challenges. I've been the MP for the last two years. I, I have my head to the ground on the issues and I know what the people in this area want and I think Conservatives and myself as the candidate, we have uh, the best path forward to, for the benefit of families in these communities. Well, thank you coming. Uh, thank you for taking the time today to come out to the studio. Thank you so much, Eric. No Appreciate problem. Appreciate it. Join us again on the next installment when Skylar Blossino sits down with the Christian Heritage Party leader, Ernest Chauvet, and remember, and remember, regardless of what party you're supporting, please make sure to get out and vote on Monday, October 21st.